the Western is a way of, of revealing things to ourselves. It's a way of celebrating mm -hmm. our story, the American story. But it's also the human story in many ways. And I think that's what, that's what peoples in other countries could see. John, do, uh, do other countries make Western movies, or is this a, a uniquely American genre? I think it, it certainly is an American genre that was copied. We know about the spaghetti Westerns, Sergio, Sergio Leone, and other, there were many other Westerns that were made by directors abroad. But I think the Western as a... As but the a, spaghetti Westerns are set in America, right? Yeah, many or of them are, and filmed in Mexico, Spain, maybe, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> Although one of the great uh, spaghetti westerns, Once Upon a Time in the West by Sergio Leone, he paid homage to John Ford by going to Monument Valley. Right. And his cameraman said, when, when, when Leone came to Monument Valley, he was like a kid. He said he saw, he went to this spot and that spot. Every place he said, this is where Ford shot this scene. Uh -huh. This is where Ford shot that scene. So yeah, it, that was truly, uh, 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 I think the art form that, that inspired the imagination of people around the world. I think the Western, in the, for a long period of time, was the thing that most uh, uh, foreign audiences understood about America was, was through the Western. I remember somebody was telling me after the collapse of the Soviet Union, somebody went to one of these remote areas in, uh, I forget where it was, in Eastern Europe. Uh, and he, 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 was in the, he was talking to some woman, and some, some peasant came, uh, who, who came up and found out he was American. And she asked him, she said, you know John Wayne then. <laughs> <laughs> so they were, they, I think other than jazz, there's nothing uh -huh. that is so distinctively American as the, as the Western. And it was popular probably from the beginning of movies till Certainly the, the end of the 70s. But then it, I think, ceased to be so popular because uh, they started to make different kinds of Westerns. But I think Westerns are, are, are something that any peoples can understand because every people have gone through that stage. Every, every, every society, some of them further back, mm -hmm. but at one time, uh, people come together and form communities. And so the questions that are raised in the Western are questions that are just human questions. That's right. There's sort of archetypal <clears throat> right. questions about human beginnings. But I, I, I think of um, another one of those late 19th century American writers, Frederick Jackson Turner, mm -hmm. uh, a historian uh, who's famous for the so-called frontier thesis. Right. Uh, and the, the gist of that is that America has always been a country re- inventing itself on successive frontiers. Mm -hmm. so first it was the Appalachian Mountains, then it was the Mississippi, mm -hmm. and then the Rockies, and finally the West. And there was something peculiarly American and democratic about this experience of uh, life at the frontier. That was the cutting edge of uh, Americanization, you might mm -hmm. say, or the meaning of, of America. Is that, uh, is that something that Ford uh, believed in as well, or did he have a did he have a different view of that process? Uh, I think he what Ford saw were were the possibilities that the that were revealed in looking at the frontier because that's the point at which savagery and civilization mm -hmm. you're you're right at the intersection there between savagery and civilization, and you can look to both sides. I don't think he thought about this in a in a, in, in a way that that uh, progressives, progressives would as, as, as a kind of movement, and, mm -hmm. and, it, and, it, and that movement itself will determine a way of life that's ending. I mean, his view was you can recreate those on another plane. Mm -hmm. You can recreate that, that, that conflict in, in movies. That, but, and you can learn lessons from that conflict at any time. Uh, so it, it, I think his goal, his view was not to think about it as, as extinguishing possibilities mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. for Turner, the end of the frontier means something that, that it will not be possible anymore for certain things. 
forward That's right. Thought. I mean, the end of the frontier <clears throat> for the progressives is a very anxiety-producing sure, sure. moment because it means that America, the old America is dead or dying right, right. at any rate. And um, for some of them, like Teddy Roosevelt, it means we're, we're going to become a soft mm -hmm. nation. We, don't, we won't have the frontier experience. We won't have to face uh, barbarism and uh, death as, our, as, every six, as every preceding generation of Americans mm -hmm. had to do. Um, and that was worrisome. Well, let, let me put it this way. When civilization is understood in a progressive way, one assumes that once humans are civilized, there's no going back. Well, John Ford filmed all of World War II. He filmed every major battle. He filmed the death camps after World War II. Mm -hmm. He was convinced that barbarism was not a thing of the past. Yeah. When he saw one of the greatest countries of the world, Germany, and went through those ovens and watched and looked at the pile of bones, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, he knew savagery is, 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 is potential in any time. It's an ever-present human right. possibility. Right. It's not right. something we've right. permanently left behind. Right. And, and that's why I think he, in, in, in his, what he learned about human beings and human nature in the war actually set him on his course because when you everybody that knew Ford said he was changed after the war mm -hmm. for one he and some of the other great directors uh, uh, George Stevens who mm -hmm. did Shane uh, George, uh, so many of them worked in and filmed the war they were very serious after the war George Stevens great director of comedies before the war never made a comedy after the war mm -hmm and made westerns mm -hmm. like Shane and, and uh, other great westerns. What Ford and, and uh, Stevens thought about was how do you engage a serious subject in a serious way in a business that is inherently frivolous? As they <laughs> thought, now I don't want to... Still a problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and so they thought you had to develop certain art form that you can reveal some of these things and Ford thought that the Western is the best way to do it. All of the problems of, of, of human beings that exist, that existed previously, still exist in, in some form or another. So yeah, I, I think uh, the Western is a way of, of revealing things to ourselves. It's a way of celebrating mm -hmm. our story, the American story. But it's also the human story in many ways. And I think that's what, that's what peoples in other countries could see. That, that these are, uh, these are just ha Americans who are at the actors, but this could right. be anybody. Now, the Western faded in popularity um, around Vietnam, the time mm -hmm. of Vietnam in the 1970s and thereafter. It's made a kind of comeback, I think it's fair to say, since then. Although the, the, some of the Westerns uh, have been dark. Uh, one thinks of, say, uh, Clint Eastwood's uh, Unforgiven. Mm -hmm. Is that the kind of movie that a John Ford would have made? I don't believe so, no. And I, I think a, a director that I like very much in, 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 as a Western director, his career shows you in a way uh, what the politics of America does to the artist. Mm -hmm. Sam Peckinpah, who was a great <coughs> Western director, I think after Ford, perhaps the greatest, very much inspired by Ford. His favorite movie was My Darling Clementine. Mm -hmm. What are, what are Peck, some of Peckinpah's films? Ride the High Country. Mm -hmm. His most famous film, The Wild Bunch. The Wild Bunch. He made a number of films, but what I would say is he started in television, and he was the guy who created The Rifleman, mm -hmm. all those very decent shows that were made uh, about what they still perceived America to be, a decent society. Ride the High Country was about how the past, the old men who are living past the time in which their usefulness mm -hmm. is, is gone. They're now policemen. These guys were marshals. Yes. And their, their time has passed, and, but they still want to retain their honor and their dignity in a time that changes. And, and there's a tension in there between two of the old men, Randolph Scott, mm -hmm. uh, Scott and Joel McRae about what does the present owe the past? And the Randolph Scott character, he thinks they've been scorned 
and that we should just get what we can get. Right. And so he's, he wants to steal the payroll. And Joel McRae, he's a man of honor, and he, he sticks to the virtues of the past. And, there, and Peckinpah is still trying to celebrate the virtues. Mm -hmm. Ten years later, roughly, in The Wild Bunch, it's a completely nihilistic film. He, he no longer has any faith in the decency of any institution that's public, in government. Mm -hmm. And that film is, is a film about it's not possible to live honorably in America anymore. You can only die honorably. In The Wild Bunch, they all die. And this is a reflection of the changing politics of the, the day? The change in the way in which the, the, uh, the, the attitude toward, of the artists toward the American society and American government. So, certainly Vietnam, I think, uh, was part of, that, uh, of what uh, uh, established that transformation. There were a number of other things that happened. Nixon and Watergate, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, of course. All of the yeah. politics of that period be, uh, that, that, that uh, contributed to the, the disillusionment, so that de demoralization, <coughs> demoralization yeah. uh, of, of these folks. And the Western then, some, some critics say that the Wild Bunch, basically, that was the end of the West. Mm -hmm. I mean, what can you do after you die? I mean, when death <laughs> is, the only, is the only thing. And that's why some of those later Westerns are dark Westerns. Mm -hmm. So Ford would have never made a, a Western that was not edifying. So I think he would have preferred not to make a movie about the West if it, if it couldn't be an edifying, uh, uh, if the message of the movie could, was, could not be edifying. I think he would assume that if you make a Western that is edifying, uh, even in, in, uh, perhaps in the time in which it is made, the audiences may not be recess, receptive, but it's like a book. Mm -hmm. You don't know when it might resonate in a later time, when the people will look to some kind right. of inspiration. What we're, uh, Ford's politics, or is that an unimportant question? No, it becomes very important because uh, uh, Ford's politics, like many of those uh, in, the, in, the, in the 1930s, he was very supportive of Roosevelt, and certainly uh, of, of, of uh, Roosevelt as leader in, in World War II. In fact, Roosevelt himself uh, 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 approached Ford to do a uh, a docu uh, uh, create a film unit to record the war long before the war. I think he started, Ford started putting to it, that field photographic unit in 1939. So by the, by the time the war came, uh, he had put together about 400 craftsmen to film the war. He was very supportive of Roosevelt because he thought he was a, a great leader. Uh, so he was, I would say, you could say they would have con considered Ford liberal mm -hmm. in, in the 30s, as many were. Uh, uh, liberal he and made movies liberal like, and patriotic. Right. Yes. He made movies like The Grapes of Wrath, mm -hmm. uh, How Green Was My Valley, all of those in the 1930s. But after the war, <clears throat> he becomes much more conservative. Mm -hmm. Not openly the way, say, John Wayne was. Right. You know, John Wayne was, was really upfront about it. But by 1964, John Ford voted for Goldwater. Mm -hmm. And he became a, a, a great defender of, of the Vietnam War in a time when, when nobody was defending <laughs> it. And I think where his reputation was tarnished uh, before he died was he, he actually accepted the Medal of Freedom mm -hmm. from Richard Nix in 1973. He was given the Medal of Freedom when John Ford was given the first American Film Institute's Lifetime Achievement Award mm -hmm. in, in 1973. And it was before a Hollywood crowd, absolutely hostile to Richard Nixon. And John Ford, who was just a few months before dying, he, he was in a chair. He got up and he said, God bless President Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter Bogdanovich actually said that that really hurt Ford for a long period of time because the uh, film uh, uh, school uh, uh, critics... They Freedom of speech Ford. is not, <laughs> not, no, they, not they, practiced around so here. So his conservatism yes. in the late part yeah. of his life really, really hurt his reputation for a while. In fact, for a period of time, I think Bogdanovich said he wasn't even taught in film school until, you know, uh, there was a little bit of the passion was, was gone, and I'm sure he's back now, and he's... He's, he's perceived as one of the great directors, but it did hurt his reputation. 
uh, uh, his, his politics by the time he died. He, uh, he's un unusual in having made so many movies about American history. Yeah, I mean, he all of them. He all essentially them. treated almost every period of American history with he at did. least one film. Was yeah, that, was that a, a, a conscious uh, design of his or did it I just I think it was, it, it had to be because he starts with the, the, the colonial and the revolutionary period and he makes his document, he makes movies about every war, either, either a documentary or the actual uh, uh, a movie about, all the way up through, to, mm -hmm. he made a movie about Vietnam. That didn't help him either. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. He made a movie, This is Korea. Uh -huh. In fact, uh, a story about that, uh, when Ford went, was, was making This is Korea, General MacArthur was in, was in Japan and he, he, he sent for, he, he sent for Ford and said, I want, I want you to come and meet me. And so uh, Ford flew over to Japan to meet with what MacArthur said, you're my favorite director. Uh -huh. And he said about Ford, when he met him, he said, your movies, your, your, your cavalry trilogy, the movies that he made after the war, she wore a yellow ribbon, Ford Apache, Rio Grande. MacArthur said to him, those are the most accurate and best movies I think that were ever made. I grew up on those outposts, mm -hmm. and they're absolutely accurate about how that life reveal, uh, was in, in, in the 1880s and 1890s. I would have thought MacArthur might have been auditioning. <laughs> well, <laughs> so Ford, he would Ford, undoubtedly have liked a movie about his life to have been in right, the, the, the Ford's, Ford's could do. Uh, yeah. yes. Ford was actually not too, I don't know if you saw They Were Expendable. I have, yes. They Were Expendable, you know, is about the defeat in the Philippines. Right. And there was a lot of the, 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 uh, the uh, advisors, the, the military advisors, that were really hostile to uh, MacArthur mm -hmm. because of MacArthur's retreat, having to, to re... And Ford, Ford made it a point to honor MacArthur mm -hmm. in that, not to denigrate him in any way. And his, he, when he filmed the scene of MacArthur, apparently even the, the people that were, that were opposed to MacArthur and, and, and you know, didn't like what he had done, they were just awestruck by, by, by what he did. So Ford never denigrated the military, even, with the, even though the acts mm -hmm. of those in the military oftentimes were disastrous, like Fort Apache. Right. But I think in making the movie, they were expendable. In 1945, that tells you something about Ford right there. He was making a movie after it was clear that we were victorious in the war about the greatest defeat. <laughs> That's right. And, and so he was, give, he was saying, look, you know, what it takes to win wars is, is something that is, you can never lose those, the, the virtues. And so he celebrated the, that Admiral Bulkley, who was the, is really That's the right. hero of that, of that movie. <laughs>